Thank you, Cameron. It's 700 years today since a bloody event shaped the course of Scottish history. At the sacred altar of Greyfriars Monastery in Dumfries, Robert the Bruce murdered his cousin, John Cameron, a fellow pretender to the vacant throne of Scotland. Bruce claimed the crown and embarked on the wars of independence, which culminated in the defining victory at Bannockburn. Willie Johnson has more. Ah, come on. Bruce. Robert the Bruce and John the Red Common were cousins but sworn enemies. Their arranged meeting on this day in 1306 soon turned acrimonious. Why are you sending letters to Edward? I sent no letter to Edward. I took it off your man. You oh, lie! No! Within seconds, John Common lay dying at the altar. A position! A no. position for my lord! Bruce was forced to confront the enormity of his act. I'm frightened. I drew blood in God's house. To avoid charges of murder and sacrilege, Bruce fled from Dumfries to Schoon to have himself crowned King of Scotland. The rest, as you say, is history. Uh, it was an event which helped shape the whole future of Scotland. It set Bruce on the path uh, to Bannockburn and beyond, and more importantly, uh, the Treaty on Northampton and Edinburgh, which was signed about six months before Bruce's death. Now, that treaty essentially governed Scotland's independence as a nation-state in its own right. Dumfries Museum displays a cast of Bruce's head, and it might be said that skullduggery was his catalyst. But was Bruce driven by Scottish patriotism or selfish pragmatism to hold on to family lands and fortunes? It was the Commons who were the patriotic party. It was the Commons who had done more to defend the liberties and freedoms of Scotland than the Bruce's had ever done. And that's the situation. I mean, if you were around in 136 and you heard about this episode, you'd probably say the wrong man got killed. However, even the sceptics concede that Bruce grew into and ultimately merited his hero status. That Bruce spent his life looking over his shoulder, worried about where the next assassin was coming from. You know, and to overcome these tremendous odds, fighting against the most powerful king in Europe, Edward I, fighting a civil war against the commons and their allies, the Balliols, uh, fighting against himself in a way for this terrible deed that he'd done. Uh, it's amazing that Bruce manages to pull it all off, win the Battle of Bannockburn and safeguard the liberty of Scotland. Willie Johnston, reporting Scotland, Dumfriesshire.